My husband and I first met when we were both 22 years old at his best friend's wedding. It was a beautiful day filled with laughter and joy. I felt a spark between us, like something magical was happening. The day after the wedding, we went on our first date in the park. We laughed, talked, and got to know each other better. It was the start of something special. Felix was everything I ever wanted in a partner. He was smart, kind, and incredibly handsome. He made me feel loved and supported, always there for me when I needed him. We decided to move in together after a year, and a year later, we got married. But, like all relationships, ours had its ups and downs. Financial issues started to strain our young family, leading to occasional conflicts. During one of our fights, I left home for two weeks. It was a difficult time for both of us. I felt hurt and angry, and my pride stopped me from reaching out first. But during that time, Felix's best friend Daima, who was also my friend, offered me support. We talked and shared our feelings, and one thing led to another. I made a mistake and spent a night with Daima. I thought it was payback for Felix's indifference, but I soon realized how wrong I was. Just three days later, Felix came to me with roses, apologizing and begging for my return. I knew I had to confess, but I couldn't bear to break his heart. Then, I discovered I was pregnant, and to my shock, the child was not Felix's but Daima's. It was a devastating revelation, and I struggled with what to do. I gave birth to my son six months later, and every night, I cried, regretting my foolishness and losing the love of my life. Despite everything, Felix was overjoyed when our son was born. He held him in his arms with pride, calling him his son, his joy, his daddy's pride. It was a bittersweet moment, knowing the truth but unable to confess. I had planned to tell Felix the truth when our son grew older, but that day never arrived, and I kept on hiding the truth. Fourteen years went by, and our family seemed happy. I kept my secret buried deep because being a dad is about more than just biology. But, you know, secrets have a sneaky way of showing up. One day, Felix found some letters I had written to Daima, but never sent. When I got home, he was in the dark, holding those letters. It crushed me. He didn't say anything, and his eyes were empty. I cried, begged for forgiveness, and tried to explain, but he stayed silent. In that silence, I knew I messed up big time and was ready to face whatever came next. Felix just moved away from the window, sat on the couch, and cried. Seeing him like that made me lose it, and I couldn't stop crying. He left without saying a word, and I kept crying, realizing I had wrecked his life. My husband and I are both 38 years old, and our son Tom was everything to us. We had hoped for another kid, but my health problems got in the way. Felix had dedicated himself to raising our son, his best friend's love, his pride, all based on a lie. That night, all I could think about was how badly I messed up. I wanted to disappear, but my love for our son stopped me. The next morning, Felix packed his things and left, despite my begging him to stay. It's been two months, and I'm still hoping for a chance to say sorry. I may be foolish, but I think I might have a shot, since Felix hasn't asked for a divorce and still talks to our son. Damani found out he was the dad a year after the birth. I didn't think it would affect him, but he started to feel like a dad. He offered to raise our son since he and his wife didn't have kids, but I said no because I only loved Felix. Tom felt sorry for his biological dad, but I didn't want to mess up his family. I pleaded with Daima not to get involved, telling him how much I loved my husband, our boy, and our family. Daima tried to help by sending money for our child, but I said no. Eventually, he left our lives, even though he and Felix stayed friends until everything came out. As for the letters, I kept them because they meant something to me, but it ended up costing me my family. My husband has always been a wonderful person. After our big fight, I made a silly choice to stay with my brother for two weeks. We got along well. After arguing with Felix, I often talked to my brother on the phone. He tried to calm me down and get me to go back to Felix, but I wanted Felix to make the first move, not his friend. And Felix stayed silent. One evening when my brother was out, Dima called and offered to come over, saying that these things happen in many families at first, and I needed a distraction. I said yes. And without much thinking, he came over. Then today, my son came home after spending the weekend with his dad, and mentioned they talked about the future of our family. I've been worried all day, wondering what Felix said to our son. 
if he's willing to come back, he wouldn't lie to our child. Except for that one time, I've never cheated on my husband in our 16 years together. It was my only mistake. My son doesn't know who his real dad is, and I hope he never finds out. He loves Felix deeply, trusts him, and is proud to have him as a dad. Their bond is even stronger than the one he shares with me. If he found out the truth now, it would crush him. A lot changed this week. Last weekend, my son talked to Felix about our family's future. Felix didn't give a definite answer, but he didn't say no to the possibility of us getting back together. On Tuesday, I asked my husband out for a date at a restaurant, and to my surprise, Felix agreed, making me hopeful for a positive outcome. We didn't stay at the restaurant for long. We went for a long four-hour walk in the park instead. While we were together, we talked about our past and our love, smoothly moving on to talk about our future. I begged my husband to come back to our family, and even though he didn't say it, it seemed like he wanted the same. That night, I arranged for my son to stay over at a friend's place so my beloved could join me at home. We spent the night together, just like old times. The next morning, we didn't have much time to talk as we rushed off to work. In the evening, as my son and I were having dinner, Felix showed up unexpectedly with his things. It was such a joyful moment, and my son was over the moon to see his dad. I can't help but wonder if Felix has truly forgiven me. My biggest fear is that after spending some time with me, he might decide he doesn't want this family anymore. But I love him so much, and I know I let him down. I'm willing to do anything to make things right. Since Felix came back, he hasn't brought up the paternity issue. And although he knows what happened, he doesn't seem angry or upset with me. Most importantly, his bond with Tom hasn't changed, which was something I was really worried about. Last night, we talked about our son's future, and we both agreed that he might move out in a few years. Felix was really happy to be a dad, and it got us thinking about having another child. I'm planning to see a doctor soon, and Felix was genuinely excited about the idea. It's been more than a month since my last message. I've started treatment, and my beloved has been by my side, supporting me through it all. He doesn't dwell on the past. According to the doctors, there's a good chance I could have a baby after the treatment. The process is tough and expensive, but we're ready to face any challenges for our happiness. Looking back, I realize how big of a mistake I made, but I can't turn back time. I have to take responsibility and live with what I've done. Things have changed in the family of my son's biological dad. Felix and Dima haven't talked for months, and I thought their story was over. But I was wrong. Dima's wife found out about the child he had with me, and she's in a lot of pain and frustration. She's feeling the same pain my husband felt a few months back, betrayed by her loving husband and her closest friend. We had one talk, or rather a shouting match, with her yelling, crying, and even slapping me a few times. Since then, we haven't spoken, and I haven't tried to reach out to her. I know she'll never forgive me. I had hoped she'd come around and give her husband another chance. But last week, she filed for divorce and kicked Daima out of their home. What hurts the most in this whole mess are their two young daughters, aged 12 and 5. Now their family is torn apart because of my mistakes. Six people have suffered because of me. My dear husband, who devoted his life to his family. My son, who will never know that his beloved father whom he admires so much, isn't his biological dad. My best friend, who lost her marriage because of me and is now alone with two kids. And her daughters, who lost their favorite daddy. Then there's Daima himself. He lost the most in this mess, a friend he's been inseparable from for over 15 years, a wife who doesn't want to see him, his daughters whom Nasty doesn't even let talk to him, and his apartment, which he worked hard for, and will now be taken by his ex-wife. All this pain... All this suffering, it's all because of me. I don't know if I deserve to have children at all. Why didn't my lover forgive me? Why? If I were in his shoes, I wouldn't even look at me. We tried therapy so we could have a child of our own, but it didn't work out. In the end, we decided it's not worth it. These treatments are expensive and probably won't succeed. At first, my husband seemed okay with everything, or so I thought. But later, I realized how much he was hurting. Then the worst happened at the end of the summer. It was exactly what I feared. Our son found out the truth. A day I'll never forget. I wish I could erase it from my memory, but I can't. I truly believed I could shield my child from the consequences of my actions. 
I hoped and prayed, but it was all for nothing. When Tom learned the truth, something inside him shattered. He went from being a sweet, caring boy who loved his family to someone completely different in just a few days. It's been almost four months now, and we're living in a nightmare. My son has changed a lot lately. He started drinking, smoking, and staying out late at night. We don't even know where he goes the rest of the time. He's made some really unsettling friends, and just looking at them gives me the creeps. They're rough-looking kids with a bad reputation in our neighborhood. I've talked to the police, but they say it's a family issue. They won't do anything about it. They've got more important things to deal with, they say. Now, my son even hates Felix, his own dad. They used to be close. What did he say to his father? I know my son is just suffering because of my mistakes, but my husband didn't deserve this. He went through so much when the truth about Tom came out. And then, we had to give up on having a child of our own. And now, this living nightmare. About a month ago, Felix started having heart problems. He ended up in the hospital with symptoms that looked like a heart attack. Luckily, it wasn't that serious, but he's on medication now and might need surgery later on. The doctors told him to avoid stress, but my son keeps provoking him every chance he gets. I try to help, but my husband thinks I'm useless. I see his pain and anger every day. He spends days in bed without saying a word. I've warned him that depression could hurt his heart, but he won't listen. We're only 39 years old, but we look and feel much older. My husband looks like he's 50, and he's always so sad. I've got wrinkles and big bags under my eyes. I'm stuck in a nightmare of my own making. Every day, I blame myself for my mistake, my betrayal. I pray for peace and happiness in our family, but I'm starting to lose hope. I don't believe in God or a happy ending for us anymore. Now I understand how silly I was to think I could get away with what I did. It weighs heavy on my heart, knowing I've ruined the lives of six people. Daima's situation is even worse. His wife, nasty, divorced him and took him to court, leaving him with nothing. She's turned to partying, drinking, and changing partners every week, unable to recover from the betrayal of her husband and me, her best friend. I've tried talking to her, but she gets hysterical and we end up arguing. She's always been morally weak and I destroyed her. Their daughters now live with Nasty in a small apartment to avoid her different partners. I haven't heard from Daima in six months, not a word. December 31st should be a happy time, but not for me. My husband is visiting his parents and I don't know where Tom is. He won't answer his phone. I've lost all my friends, and our family is treated like outcasts since everything came out. I sit alone at the table, crying from loneliness, not happiness. This all happened last year when my husband and I were on vacation in Croatia. We met a couple, Ron and Molly, who were experienced travelers. They loved scuba diving, just like us. We did everything together, except for breakfast, because Molly liked to sleep in. I didn't mind being alone in the mornings, but I'd head to the beach later on. We often sat with two younger guys at breakfast. One spoke English well with a slight accent while the others stayed quiet and smiled. I wondered where they were from but felt awkward asking. Our interactions were simple, just saying hello and wishing each other a good meal. Our vacation had a routine we rarely changed. In the mornings, Molly and Ron went to the beach. Later, when it got too hot, we'd dive, then head back to the beach until sunset. And finally, we'd go to a bar or cafe for some dancing at night. Unlike them, I didn't join in diving despite my husband's efforts to get me interested. I was scared of going deep underwater and worried about running out of air. So, I stayed on the boat or swam around it while my husband went diving. After a few days, I got bored and started spending time at the hotel pool. One day at the pool, someone greeted me, and I was startled, dropping my magazine. It was the guy from breakfast, and he apologized for scaring me. I stayed quiet, still shaken, but he apologized again and left. Later he came back, apologized once more, and asked if he could buy me a drink. I hesitated, but accepted the wine he offered. He apologized again, and started talking. His name was Troy, he was German, and he used to live on the island before moving to Germany. He was on vacation with his friend Kurt, who didn't speak much English. Our talk went smoothly, and I started feeling empathy for him. The next day, he came back, and by day three, I eagerly awaited his arrival. 
he became a regular guest, and we formed a strong bond. Our chats covered many topics, with no limits. We just enjoyed our laid-back talks. Our time at the resort continued, and we got used to each other's company. I cherished our talks, and he left a good impression on me. Eventually, I even grew fond of him. Our discussions were diverse, and we could talk about anything. It felt easy and fun. As our vacation went on, we crossed the equator. Molly's birthday changed our routine. We spent part of the day searching for her gift, and then went to a cafe for dinner and dancing. The men had whiskey, while Molly and I enjoyed local red wine. It was light and tasty, and we had quite a bit. I didn't notice feeling tipsy. Molly and I had a blast dancing, while Stephen and Ron chatted at the table. Sometimes, we returned to catch our breath. I saw Troy near the bar, and he came over and asked my husband if he could dance with me. We danced a bit, and he held me close. He whispered something funny in my ear, and I giggled. When the music stopped, we went back to our table. Molly got tired of the guy's talk and invited Troy to join us, which surprised me. To my surprise, he agreed. When we found out it was Troy's birthday, we toasted to Molly. Later, Molly, Troy, and I went back to the dance floor. During a slow song, Troy asked me to dance again. After dancing, we returned to our table, had more drinks, and I suggested we all dance. Stephen, Ron, and Molly declined, so Troy and I went back to the dance floor. During another slow dance, his hand kept moving on my hips. I told him about it, but he pretended not to understand. It kept happening, and I got tired of it. Even though I liked his touch, I started putting his hand back on my waist myself. During the next slow dance it happened again, and I got tired of moving his hand away. It was dark on the dance floor, and no one was paying attention. He started touching me lightly. His touch felt good, but there was a limit. He asked if I was uncomfortable, which surprised me. I didn't know how to respond. He pulled me closer and whispered in my ear, telling me I was beautiful and that he liked me a lot. When I saw him, he kept saying nice things about me. His words were a bit jumbled, but it was thrilling. My head was spinning with his words, the drinks, and the fuzziness. Please, stop, I said, but he kept complimenting me. Then, suddenly, he stopped talking and started kissing me. My ear, my hair, my neck, everywhere. It felt nice, but then he got more intense. What's he doing? Is he out of his mind? Stop, I pleaded, trembling with a mix of desire and fear. He grabbed my arm and pulled me along. I followed, feeling like I was in a daze, like I was in a fog. He practically dragged me somewhere until we finally stopped. I was pushed against something, and he started kissing me again. I couldn't think straight, unsure of where I was or who I was with. His kisses were all over my face, my hair, my neck. I was shaking all over. Then he kissed me deeply on the lips. Goosebumps covered my skin, and I felt my desire growing. When Troy's kiss ended, I could feel the warmth of his face and his uneven breaths. Shivers ran down my spine, and everything around me seemed blurry as I drifted into a mental fog. We made our way through some bushes and entered an alleyway. The cafe was just a few steps away, and I was getting more excited. All that had happened was outside the cafe, where anyone could have seen us. The thought sent a mix of excitement and nervousness through me. In a few minutes, we arrived at the entrance to the cafe's dance floor. Troy leaned in and whispered, You're amazing. When your husband falls asleep, come over and handed me his number. Still feeling dazed, I headed to the bathroom. I splashed water on my face to try to calm down. The cool water helped me snap back to reality. I realized I was a married woman who had just betrayed her husband with a stranger. When I returned to my husband and friends, a growing fear crept over me with each step. I felt cold inside, my cheeks flushed, and it seemed like I had lost control of myself. Surprisingly, no one asked about my absence. I sank into my chair and poured a full glass of wine. I drank it slowly, trying to hide any signs of what had happened. Despite my efforts, Stephen noticed something was off and asked, Katie, are you okay? I nodded quietly. Should we go home? He asked. Again, I nodded. I was torn between feeling excited about what had happened and feeling anxious about the possibility of getting caught. Stephen seemed a bit unsteady on his feet from drinking, but I wasn't worried about that. I just hoped I wouldn't have to deal with encounters like that with strangers again.